We're just close enough to the Groundhog Day time slip continuum to see the death of BlackBerry phones again. And just like Phil Connor's experiences, no repeat is ever exactly the same as the last one. This is the Android Police Podcast. All quiet on the Western Front? Yeah, we're, we're waiting for Jules' cue. <laughs> so it's Tuesday, February 4th. Uh, welcome, I'm Ryan Hager, and joining us today is a video producer for XDA TV and generally chill guy. Uh, he's Tarek TK Bay. Yeah. Mahaba to you. Uh, Mahaba to you as well. Thank you very much. Uh, so it is Merhaba. Jules, you lied to me. I thought it was the same as it was in Turkish because it's mer- Merhaba is hello in Turkish, and I didn't know if it was the same in uh, Lebanese. It is, it is. Uh, but I usually start with mine as uh, Sabaho, which is uh, good morning. So I, mm. the, the call card of most of my videos on my channel, at least, is uh, Sabaho, everybody. And it's uh, Marhaba. Yeah, Marhaba is uh, universal. It works with almost any Arabic speaking country. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know that. I took uh, a year of poorly remembered, uh, sort of skipped along Turkish in high school. And uh, mm-hmm. that's pretty much all I remember is Merhaba Nislsen. Mm. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I'm really, really excited that uh, we're able to actually have a little chat. Yeah, no, uh, some good news and interesting news this week. Yeah, it's been an interesting week. For We would you know, assume it would be a little slower, maybe more leaks in preparation for MWC and for Samsung. And yet we had a fairly big announcement out of TCL uh, just yeah. what, it, yesterday. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty yeah. much uh, the an inter- a very sad announcement. But it's, an, uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it, and I'm sure you'll elaborate a little bit more about it. I'm I'm actually very sad. It it actually impacts you know a very lovely device that I I really enjoy using. So for anyone who's out of the loop, um, TCL owned BlackBerry uh, officially announced yesterday that uh, BlackBerry Mobile TCL's BlackBerry phones are done. They're gone. Like this is the end. Um, they're the brand is essentially being retired again. Uh, after it was revived in a licensing agreement by TCL to make the last couple BlackBerry phones, like the one you just showed, I think that was the Key 2. Yeah, the Key 2, not the LE, but yeah, the regular Key 2. Yeah, and so sales uh, for existing phones will end in uh, September? August, September, yeah. Yeah. Later Um, later on the year. And uh, no new devices are expected to exist in the line, and software support, uh, we're still being guaranteed by TCL software support for the the period that was previously described, which I think was two years. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's, uh, I guess, dependent upon which market you're in. But that's that's it. It's done. BlackBerry is, again, dead. Even though, really, it was, wasn't was BlackBerry this time around. But it, it, it is. It is. And it is truly is sad that we're seeing... I mean... I'm not surprised and not necessarily very surprised in the in the outcome of this. Obviously, as we saw at CES, there was a very big presence from TCL in the mobile uh, realm. They're trying to focus on their brand. And it wasn't even Alcatel specific. It was actual TCL hardware. Yeah. And they will come to market as TCL. So that was very interesting and uh, should have seen it coming. The too many players in the, you know, if you think about it, they're producing too many different things. Uh, I hope. I hope somebody does actually end up picking it up because that form factor is very unique and it, there is a market for it. People do enjoy having a physical keyboard on their on their devices. Um, I think the key line was definitely very nice. It's a nice combination of uh, mid-range power, good battery life, uh, and of course, the keyboard that we all come of love to love from uh, BlackBerry. But um, I'm excited to see also what TCL is going to do because they showed us some really interesting hardware with not too many details, the 10 yeah. line of devices. So... We'll have to see how they they uh, they bring everything together. Will will they have another query keyboard device and just don't call it a, a BlackBerry? Maybe especially now that they have years of experience making them, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We have many iterations of it. I think from the first key to the you know key two as well as the key LE, and uh, you know they had different like at least three different generations uh, yep. of the same device. So they should be able to. If they want to, of course. If they want to, I don't know. I personally, I haven't seen the sales numbers. I don't know how well they sold. I know. Uh, based on the people I've spoke to and our readers, I don't think too many people were, the, there was a very passionate core audience that was like, woohoo, keyboard phones. But yep. mm-hmm. in general, most people were like, eh. Especially when she looked at the price tag, because I think the key two was 650 at launch and it had a Snapdragon 660. Yeah, it, it, from a spec wise, that's the thing. It, it, they they realized they didn't need the, the high end processors because they weren't really trying to feed into you know very heavy gaming so on. The display yeah. was actually smaller. So from the form factor, there is definitely I think an appeal for keyboards supporting devices. 
Um, and uh, not that I'm trying to basically bring in another player into the conversation, but, you know, the FX Tech Pro 1, you know, definitely. Yeah. That just got released earlier this year. Um, so definitely very, very much of a small group of people. But I feel like, again, they are it, very it, passionate it, about it. it yeah. yeah. For for the for the few that do love their keyboards, they enjoy Welcome it. And uh, of course, they will fight for it. So hopefully we will see something from them. Uh, but again, yeah, TCL, I think it's, they also own uh, Nokia, don't they actually also produce the Nokia line? Uh, I can't remember. I think it, that might be true. Yeah. I know, I, that, I know that Nokia is a licensed name, but I couldn't quite remember if it was TCL that licensed them. Um, oh, Foxcom. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So X name yeah. on, the, on the Nokia <laughs> conversation. But yeah, no, um, I'm really sad to see it, but uh, hopefully we'll... we'll yeah, we'll have to see what they come up with and what the future bring. You know, it may revive again as far as a, a name uh, with another company, or maybe even TCL comes back and uses it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, who, who knows? We don't really. I don't think a motivation for why this occurred was offered either. So this could mm -hmm. be BlackBerry itself being like, no, we don't want to extend the licensing agreement. And TCL is like, oh yeah, whatever. Or TCL, you know, as as we said, because they're doing so much more of their own branding and their own devices, they might have just decided they don't need the name anymore. And and for them to actually forecast it so much in the future, I mean, they're they're telling us in January or February now uh, yeah. that they're deciding to do this later in the year. So yeah, you're right. It could be a licensing concern, uh, and it could just be that uh, they're like, you know what, we have our own thing to focus on. Let's just yeah. let's just move we might on. Be there, paying money for a name that if we no, do exactly. it who knows? And they're going to have a big a lot of lot more details on their line at, at MWC. So that's yeah. I've been waiting for that since uh, January. We saw the hardware, no detail. Yeah, so we'll know we'll know more about that. Um, so, excluding uh, the BlackBerry news, there mm -hmm. was also um, something we were pretty entertained by. Uh, Pablo Escobar's brother's uh, $400 Galaxy Fold clone that uh, is obviously and clearly a very real phone you can buy for $400 today. Um, how do you feel about that? I... <sighs> When I saw the preview for it, when I saw the actual like ad ad for it, and then the the, the claims, it it was very interesting. It was very little about the phone and more about the people in the phone that you just yeah. didn't really know if it was just a hype video. Uh, I don't know. It four hundred dollars. It's it's a very low bar. I'm not sure. I mean, realistically, what to expect. As, but I would just say adjust your expectations to the price point and and, and move cautiously. Yeah. Especially in uh, this year, we'll, we're going to see a lot more foldables than what we saw last year. This is definitely where I feel like some of the, some of the technologies that we saw last year is being fine tuned. We're having better devices, smaller form factors. I mean, I personally still have the Galaxy Fold, uh, the first generation Galaxy Fold, and I'm and I'm quite happy with it. Uh, I interested to see what the you know I saw the Razer, and uh, we'll see what the Z Flip does in a in a uh, in a week or so. Yeah, um, but a four hundred dollar foldable. I feel like there's a certain level of expectations. It may not, to me at least right now, I'm expecting more hype than reality till we actually yeah. have it in hand. So that's that. That's Did where I'm curbing my expectation. Yeah, it's hard to say, but yeah, I probably would, would end up basically just to see what it is. Just well, to I, say, yeah. We've been making the same internal debate because we we tried to talk Artem into buying one. And Artem's like, no. So at, at this point, it's like <laughs> if one of us wants to take the personal risk to buy one of these phones, I'm kind of thinking about it. It's just because it's yeah. ridiculous. Exactly. 400 bucks. How can you, you know, um, it's, yeah. it's hard and, and not, not to tie it too far back to TCL, but I mean, even TCL showed us their, uh, their concept 2k, uh, foldable device, you know, clamshell style. So everybody's getting their hand into, into foldable. So I just don't know if it's even it. real. Like if you're going to get it, it's going to be like a two screen device where it'll yeah. fold open. It's separate yeah. phones with a, with a connecting case. Right. Yeah. And, so we'll have to see, I wouldn't mind trying it out. Uh, but yeah. right now my wallet is, for the lack of a better word, prime for Samsung. <laughs> yeah, Samsung's right. about to make a major dent into my wallet. So yeah. Yeah. Major, major S 20 and, and, and the Z flip. If, if the rumors are true, um, yeah. yeah, I will, I will be broke come end of, end of February for, for some time. I'm really so, interested yeah. in the Z flip, even though it's not one of the things we're supposed to be discussing, but uh, they're claiming that it's a flexible glass panel. And to my understanding that we haven't really gotten there when it comes to material science, we have the willow glass, which yeah, kind of been, but, but not, not to weird. the extent that we saw in that, in that uh, leaked video. And I'm, 
I, I looked at the video quite a few times just to try to see if there was any indentation as the person, because the person felt uh, was folding the phone from the inside. Yeah, holding they the, were the, feeling it. it. Exactly. So it didn't look like they were doing it the same way we, you know, I at least do it on my Galaxy Fold where I hold it from the edges and I fold it on the outside so I don't damage the, the display. So it's hard to tell. It wasn't a high res video anyways, but um, yeah, no, if, if what they're saying or what they're promising us with the Z Flip does actually come true, it's it going to be... It's yeah, especially you know, especially this this far from when we had the first generation. I mean, with the issues that the fold had, to be able to get to something that is more consumer ready, something that you can put in your pocket and use, you know, front facing cameras, uh, you know, one camera on the front, two on, uh, two on the outside of the clamshell. I think there's a lot of good things coming up with it. So I think for sure I'll be picking one of those up. So as well as a hopefully the Ultra on the S20. Yeah, I, I passed on the Galaxy Fold ultimately. I had a pre-order. I was ready to do it. I canceled it right before they gave everybody those coupon codes. Damn it. Yeah, but, I, uh, uh, I, I benefit from that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I ultimately passed on that. So I'm definitely going to buy a Z Fold just because like, I'm sure there's some sort of half-truth when it comes to this glass because mm -hmm. no one no one has made an announcement about having a material like that in a display. So I'm sure it's exactly. like glass with a flexible portion of the display that's a laminated plastic and then it's glass up there which would i mean that would still be better than the full you know dent prone scratch prone plastic we saw in the previous one but yeah the and then for me just kind of a uh, clarification i originally did get the the fold itself not from the pre-orders but uh and i did end up selling that one and i purchased it again used so I feel like at around thirteen hundred bucks, the fold does make sense to me as far mm -hmm. as a usable device. But at the twenty two hundred, with the original price point, that's just yeah. it was just like I no, I can't. I'd rather spend another eight ninety nine and buy buy myself a, a brand new one plus, uh, you know, five G McLaren, and then just be happy with that. So for me, uh, at thirteen, I was able to kind of accept it. Uh, but I think as a device itself, it has it, it has its merit. I like the foldable functionality. It gives you a bigger display, and I'm not a hundred percent sold. I'm, I'm intrigued by the new tech with the Z Flip and, and, the, Z, and the Razer and, and other foldables. But right now, these devices are giving me a form factor that I currently have with my smartphone. So I, yeah. I need to see the functionality. Does it really make sense for it to be that small? And yeah. so I, I want to hold the novelty it. associated with the new form factor. Yeah, you know, it, how do I have to scale to this? And what works? What's better? What's worse? It, and that's what it is. I, and I hope that uh, I hope Samsung blows my mind next week. And even though we saw we saw some leaks. I'm looking forward to those, uh, you know, few things that we missed. And of course, uh, yeah, the Z Flip is where it's at. I feel like the Razer is great. Uh, exclusivity right now in the U.S. kind of limited the accessibility to a few, uh, you know, number of people. If they don't have the carrier, obviously they can't get yeah. it right now. And I don't think people are going to go fork fifteen hundred bucks or fourteen hundred dollars. But um, it's surprising. I, I'm, I'm so yeah, not, not to be uh, you know, extend the conversation, but uh, next no, week is no, going to no. be really exciting. I am. I'm also looking forward to. It. We'll see. We have. Uh, what what day next week is? Uh, Samsung. I think it's on Tuesday. Yeah, so it's exactly not, a week from, yeah. a week from now around this time. We don't have long to wait at all. No, no. But anticipation is killing me, man. It, we've been waiting for months with all the leaks and rumors and hands-on videos that are showing up everywhere. <laughs> well, I, I hate to drag out the conversation too long, but we do have. I mean, I kind of jumped the gun actually when we move between subjects. So we do have a little bit of time to talk about. What are you looking forward to most, uh, other than the foldable phone? Uh, for next week so so for me i think so the the at least with the information that we're getting right now we're seeing is there's going to be three different versions that we had last year but there is no e model so the e i think is out right that's interesting i, I figured that, that, that would be speaking around especially yeah, considering how popular it was I, that, that was exactly what i'm thinking like it's a mid-range i mean it wasn't even mid-range the spec wise i mean overall it was still running the same processor it's still i mean it had a little bit less ram the display wasn't queer hd you had the 1080p but it was the 699 alternative yeah that you wanted to have out of the Galaxy line. And I feel like it was a popular device. It competed straight ahead with the iPhone 11, I think around the, around the timing where when it later came on, but then no more. And now we're talking about the S20 standard model is like, at least from what I saw yesterday or even earlier from Max uh, was tweeting over on, on, uh, on Twitter. Like, I think it's like a thousand bucks starting yeah. at a thousand. So I guess maybe we'll hear that there, I don't know if the E line will come later. Maybe that that's a plan for them. I don't know. Or maybe the because they just did just bring out the light line, right? We have the uh, mm -hmm. the uh, S10 light. light. Yeah, the S10 yeah. light. So they, in their mind, the lights might be taking over for the whole E line. They might fill that same niche in the market. So who knows? You know what? Yeah, yeah. No, that that makes perfect sense because the light model, the S10 light at least, is running the exact same processor that we had with the S10e. It's the 855. It's not even the 855 plus. 
Um, no headphone jack, but it's a, a bigger 1080p display. So it, it's kind of a slightly upgraded version of an S10e. Yeah. But you're right. That could be the, the design that they decide, decide to go with. The light line will be, there'll be a light S10, a light Note 10, or in this situation, will be 20 and 20. And, um, but then when, when will the timing be? Because at this point, they released them so late in the year. Yeah, I mean, we saw them at CES, uh, and they're releasing them now. And now they're not international. I think, as far as I remember, certain markets were getting certain versions of the device. Like I think the Note 10 was an Exynos device, um, and I think it's uh, we're starting to see them pop up in different areas. So India, I think, is starting to show the S10 Lite. So for me, it's interesting uh, yeah. that they chose to do that. As long as the price is right, I think it's not a problem. But they should have it at the same time, right? They should give you instead yeah. like. You want the Ferrari, you want the Lambo, you want the car that you know that'll just do everything so fast for you, twelve gigs or whatever, and then we can give you the eight gig model, you know, for six ninety nine, seven ninety nine, something like that, or seven forty nine. Exactly. If someone's going to cannibalize your sales, you may may as well, in the words of Apple, you may as well make sure it's you. So you release exactly. all your stuff at once. You have your mid range, exactly. you end, yeah. Capitalize it and and give an option to everybody, especially since Samsung is going to be in every carrier store. It's going to be yeah. online. It's going to be everywhere. I mean. And especially the S line of devices, these are the popular, I mean, nothing nothing against the Note line, but we always know that the Note line is more of a smaller subset group of people that generally go for that device. Yeah. Uh, where with the S line, I think that's where, you know, you and I will get it, our, you know, we'll get it for our wife, we'll get it for our kids. Uh, depending on, I think the S10e, I think, had a very good big market and I still, I'm very big fan of the S10. see it apparently die, so I'm, I'm also sad. Like one gen saying. and out. Yeah. I kind of wanted. Okay. I never got one, but I was about to buy the bullet. I, I think the S10 Plus, uh, actually, surprisingly, with the changes that they did with the S20, it still makes a perfect or a really good uh, case for as far as getting that used now or even getting it as a device in 2020. Yeah. Um, it's the last device to have a headphone jack from Samsung. I mean, they that was it. The last thing. So the S20 Plus. Uh, for me, as a device, carries a lot of the cool things: wireless charging, reverse wireless charging, uh, dual aperture lenses on the back, multiple lenses on the front. Uh, you know, five cameras on that device. Uh, it still it was, holds up pretty well. It still holds up. Yeah, the eight fifty five is is it's not that old. A lot of people kind of dismiss it because you're like, oh yeah, eight sixty five is faster, and it is. Ah, it will fine. do better. At that level of the differences is like for most people, it's going to be so small. Exactly. I, I think the 855 would still make a, a, very, a very good purchase in 2020 uh, if, if obviously, they'll have any, any of these devices in store. But I we'll mean, have to see how that goes. Z's, the Z Flip's going to land with an 855, right? So, I mean, it's still a yeah. good choice in 2020. No, so. no, exactly. Yeah, they're not. Uh, Samsung still has a lot of those uh, chips, obviously. I think that's probably what drove the decision to go with the 855. But also to kind of bring down the price, because last year with the 855, it was the flagship of that year. Now they're using last year's chipsets. So it kind of brings down the cost, and I think that's where we're seeing some of the savings yeah. there. And as Max points out in chat, uh, it's the 855 plus TK. Uh, oh, sorry, Did Max. Sorry, Max. Uh, okay. <laughs> you'll kick my butt later. Yeah, I know, I know. All right. Uh, um, before we get on further, because we keep keep going in this discussion, but before we go any further, I'd like to note that uh, it's time for our ad break. So the Android Police podcast, which is us talking right now to you through the internet. Uh, we are on live on Twitch four times a week, and we can't do it without your support. The best way to help is by subscribing to Android Police directly here on Twitch. Uh, you get a special emoji of me to use in our chats, which people have been spamming uh, all day, the entire time we've been talking. Um, and you also get free entries into all of AP's giveaways. Uh, tiers start at $5 a month, and right now you can enter to win a graphene battery pack. You can also subscribe to us for free if you have an Amazon Prime account. You pay nothing, and Jeff Bezos himself drives to my house with a check and gives us money. Uh, you need I'll do to that right now. Yeah, it's true. Uh, watch. Hold, uh, let me let me renew mine. Announcing. There we go. Uh, announcing my podcast anniversary. Hey. So you pay nothing. Amazon gives us money. You do have to manually press subscribe every month like I just did. Uh, when you do subscribe, a, a Pixel 3 style notch pops down from the center of the screen with your name on it, which is amazing, as we all know. Um, you can learn more about uh, our podcast at uh, twitch.tv slash Android Police, which is also where you can watch it. And if you don't use Twitch, you can also head to androidpolice.com and hit the donate button to chip in. Thanks. So back to Samsung. 
It's it's gonna be, yeah it's gonna loom over us for for some time till till we carry get into MWC the you know the week after. So to me, it's I, I think overall, I think they just need a better release date for the uh, the light line. If they are going to keep them and they're gonna keep them going, they make sense to have them maybe middle middle of the year. They'll have like an S light, uh, but to me, just like we said before, uh, I think a concurrent release of a standard and a light model makes more sense because the customer that's going to go for the light won't consider the higher end, but you don't want to just alienate everybody, right? Just don't like, okay, bye-bye. We don't want any mid-range. This would have been a perfect time. Uh, or even we may even hear something about the S10 light at the launch event. They may actually talk about US availability. So yeah. that could be part of the uh, thing. So saying, look, We'll have the S20 line of devices, and for uh, you know more of an entry experience, we'll have the S10 Lite that will be you know running some of the latest specifications as of late 2019, but still should be able to you know a good option for the price point that you're looking for. Yeah. So I think it's good, and it also has a bigger battery, which is nice. Yeah. Than what the S10 line of devices had, I guess. Even if it's not an E, even if it's not the S20 E that we all know secretly deep down inside we really want, it's 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 something. Yeah, some something to be. Because, you know, when Apple does it and they put in something in the mid-range, you cannot ignore the mid-range area. You can't, yeah. And it, they're actually starting to be more powerful of mid-range devices. I mean, we call them mid-range because of the price point, but they're quite capable. And, you know, OnePlus has done it year after year with their price point and their the, the performance that we get. Well, I was so, going to say, if we think about it another way, these $600 mid-range devices, five years ago, we would be calling flagships at $600. So yeah. the, the price point has moved up north significantly since then. <laughs> Really, yeah. we're talking about like flagships and super flagships. I ultra, yeah, Uber, Uber flagship or something yeah. at that point, yeah, because the ultras, yeah. I, I mean, I want the ultra, but yeah, like, like I said, my wallet is hurting. It, yeah. it definitely is. It's, <laughs> I'm glad I owned. Oh man, it's going to be expensive, but uh, yeah, it is. it's going to be bad. I got to start selling yeah. some phones. <laughs> well, the, the trading offers. If you've got some uh, S nines, S tens hanging around, and you don't even so I, 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 I thought about doing that, but. I feel like the S10 is a device I want to keep. It, it's a last of a generation. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's just good to have something on hand so that you, like when you're comparing, you can see like immediately what it was like last gen. It's probably time to get rid of maybe the S9s, but I doubt the trading on them is going to be very good. Yeah, no, I I, try, I tend to recycle, uh, I wouldn't say recycle, but like repurpose a lot of my devices. So the older generations, I'll just basically start circling around the family. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, you know, my mom doesn't really need something more than an S9. I think the S9 is quite powerful. So even with an S9 Plus, I think she's good for, I think, uh, for at least a couple of years. So, yeah, I, I think overall, that's the beauty of, uh, you know, when we get enough devices, uh, we share the we share the happiness, we share the wealth. I have... Uh... I don't have a family around here in Boston to share them with. They're all 3,000 miles away. So they just go in a drawer and they stay there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I got everybody around me in Cali and it's just, uh, yeah, we're we're actually going through a chill today, which is weird, like a high of 50. It's Oof. kind of odd, odd for us. Like two days ago, it was like 80 and today is 50. It's like, I man. envy your weather. Even at 50, I envy your weather. It's so cold here. And um, I would love to visit visit you but that's essentially it visit and come back yeah <laughs> for a very very brief period of time. the weather very, very... as jules who is currently silent can attest to oh, so man. on that note uh, you've been working for you know xda developers xda tv for quite a while you're a longtime contributor over there uh, yeah uh, speaking of which almost 10 years wow that's that's actually quite a while that's longer than yeah, I, it, in this business entirely so good for you yeah, yeah. Oh, i appreciate it it's it's a uh, it's a great community of people. Uh, a lot of a lot of the stuff happened with XEA, which actually I was a big fan before even starting there. But they gave me my break, uh, and you know they they were very patient. They they waited through all of my mistakes and all of my uh, learning. I would say uh, learning curve kind of thing there. And then yeah, no, uh, really nice group. And um, over the years, we've changed different people in and out. And the portal is actually doing very well. Um, and we'll definitely be having coverage for, as I mentioned before, you know, with the you know, Samsung stuff, myself and Max will be there. And then, of course, with MWC, we're going to have our portal, uh, Michelle, the editor in chief from the portal is going to be there, as well as one of our writer slash video producer, um, Adam Conway, as well from Ireland. Cool. So it'll be it'll be good. Yeah. Good. No, it's a good it's a good place to be part of. Yeah, no, I, I, you guys all seem to really enjoy it, and you get along real well. I, uh, we're big fans of Max. We're good friends of uh, uh, both uh, Max's and Michelle's. We, uh, we like you guys. Yeah. Max is uh, quite a popular uh, guy lately, yes, very yeah, well, much. To be fair, we hung out with Max. He was invited to the Minecraft server before all the leaks, all right? 
And he also <laughs> carried me to victory in Fortnite several times long before any of this happened. Okay, I'm going to have to talk to him about that because he needs to help me out a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> He's pretty but yeah, no, uh, that very, very good crew. Uh, Max is great and uh, looking forward to covering it because he and I also uh, went to the Note event last year for Unpacked. So this is definitely very nice to start. Uh, you know, a couple of producers here for YouTube because all of our other producers are international, India and Ireland. So it's hard for them to cover U.S. stuff. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, no, and uh, for, for people, if they're not familiar, I also have my own channel that I also manage, um, one in English, one in Arabic. So I try to diversify, um, as you said, in the beginning. So I'm trying to... Have, I started something nice in 2019 to to try to speak to some of my Arabic uh, followers, and it, there's been a good good uh, good response there. So I'm trying to keep it up. So quite busy, and as most people know, I also still have a day job. So yeah, I uh, I don't I don't I don't sleep. That that's my welcome. You're, to you're busy guy. I, to say the very least. busy. I wake yeah. up at four in the morning just to get things running. I couldn't do that, but good for you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's an old habit. I haven't broken it. I just I don't know why, but about four four thirty, I'm up. I can't sleep. I'm not a morning person. I have difficulty clawing my way out of the bed. It's bad. But uh, on a related note, uh, Jules also tells me that you are Lebanese. Earlier, we were doing our uh, little yeah. uh, Nisselson uh, introduction. Uh, if anybody missed that, but uh, have you met uh, Rita? Uh, Andrew Police is Rita El Curry. No, no, I, I, we, we, our paths maybe have crossed, but I didn't get a chance to like personally introduce it. I think for the most, well, it hasn't been that long that I've uh, started showing both the Arabic and the English name in the same uh, form. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yes, no, uh, born and raised uh, Lebanon, actually quite a while ago, but uh, I came to the U.S. when I was 17. Okay. So it's, it's been some time, but it, it, overall, I think it, it's part of, yeah. So Tarek, as you said at the beginning, is, is is the first name. And TK is actually just the first and last letter there. Yeah. Um, and then Bay's last name. So for me, it's more, uh, I feel like it, it, it it's relatable. It's an easy name to remember. It's it, I've learned it over the years that people will remember TK, even if it's if they don't know who I am. So, so the pronunciation uh, for Tarek is a little hard for some people, like it, you keep saying Tarek. And I'm like, it's Tarek, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it, it's it, and and I've heard it. Even some people will call uh, Tariq, which is another version of the name. Um, in Lebanese, Tariq or Tariq means street. Uh, not to confuse that with the Tariq, the T A R I Q spelling of the name. Mm -hmm. So um, when I first went into high school, all my teachers were calling me that, and I'm like, ah, uh -uh, got to come up with a nickname. So T K was born like literally a month after I came to the U S. There you and go. And it's stuck. And it's stuck. It's uh, it's weird when my kid calls me T K though. That's that's interesting. <laughs> That is a little odd. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine that would be difficult to adapt to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because, well, when he's talking about YouTube and stuff, he'll always talk about, like, he'll refer to me as TK. So he's like, okay, I, I yeah. understand. You're referring to the person in front of the camera. So I'm okay with that. But, but uh, uh, I was going to say, uh, Rita still lives in Lebanon. She's over there. So I don't know if you ever go back. But if you do, you should uh, look her up say hi. <laughs> um, I think I definitely, I'm, we're planning a trip back to, uh, to Lebanon, to Beirut, uh, just mostly for the family. But I um, also have one of our other producers here at XDA, uh, Rawad Zaherdin, that's also one of our, used to be one of our video producers, uh, also from Lebanon as well. And I think there's um, one of the really good Expos module uh, developers that also lives in Lebanon. So I've, I'm familiar with a few, uh, yeah. but didn't get a chance to, but I will definitely uh, try to reach out and, uh, and say hello to, to Rita. Throw an Android party and yeah, merhaba. Yeah, 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 merhaba, of course. Lebanon is, it's amazing. It's it's a beautiful country, uh, I want amazing go. food. It's, it's yeah. just... It's all I can say is I can never describe Lebanon without putting a smile on my face because those are the memories I have of it. And I grew up in a tough time. So for me to have a smile during that time tells you that that's how much love there is down there. And um, I want to be able to share that with people. But hopefully, yeah, if, if we're able to swing a trip sometime, um, we'll have to have a little bit of an Android party there because it's nice to have friends there from, you know, from just in the same community. Yeah, Always good. definitely. I'm sure she'd love to, to hang out. Yeah, yeah. So you mentioned uh, an exposed uh, developer that lives in uh, Lebanon. Uh, for people who are unfamiliar, it's the exposed is like a module based system, sort of the root and ROM crowd used to like make little customization tweaks to Android. They can kind of shoehorn in little bits of custom code in these modules. And, exactly. Uh, Jules tells me that you are a longtime exposed module addict. I am. And uh, so we used to have a series on XTA that I carried through also on my channel. Uh, it was just Exposed Tuesdays, which essentially was a, a new module every Tuesday that we did on XTA. And it Exposed just, 
if you're going to root the, your device and you want to be able to get as close to stock experience as possible, I think Expose offers you the best of both worlds. Uh, yeah. Not having to install a full custom ROM like you know Lineage OS or anything like that on your device, and it obviously losing all of the I would say stock experiences because they're getting better. I have to say that much. Where we were maybe four years ago, five years ago, uh, Samsung or even other OEMs didn't give us as much custom. Yeah, yeah. Rooting and 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 a custom ROM was literally the only way to get the full potential. And exposed, uh, I found that was a very good way to give us a customization level. Once you root the device, you do need to have root and you do have to have the ex exposed framework installed on your device before you're able to even use the modules. So yeah. that's the architecture that you have to have. Um, and I think those were great. And, and there's a big following with it. And unfortunately, as time kind of went on, uh, the demand for exposed modules kind of slightly dripped down because, again, OEMs are starting. Yeah. Yeah, they're incorporating a lot of these changes, like, you know, themes. I think the big one was themes, right? They, people wanted to be able to theme their devices, uh, dark themes, uh, custom themes, colors, and, you know, different looks on their device to make it their own. Um, and I think now with the current generation with Expose running during, uh, through the Magix installer, so you're able to actually not only root your device, but also install modules directly from the same control panel or interface. Makes it terribly uh, convenient, yeah. Extremely, and it's hard not to try it, right? So it's in, you know, and worse comes to worse, if it ever has any issue, uh, you just flash the uninstaller, disable the, uh, the modules, and your device goes back to normal. So you're, yeah. you're protected in a certain way, and of course, custom recovery always, and back up your device. A long time ago, I used to use uh, Exposed, like, I would say 2013 to around 2015. Like you were saying, mm -hmm. it was kind of the dark ages for Android because there yeah. was a different mix of software features. You got, uh, um, there were, like, the Pixel, well, there wasn't the Pixel, so you had the Nexuses, which had a very stock, like, almost too stock approach, where anything mm -hmm. that, that Google hadn't done, you couldn't do. And then Samsung had, you know, their own little mix of beneficial features and all of the bloat that came with Samsung phones. TouchWiz, yeah, man, back in the TouchWiz days. Yeah, so, like, nothing was quite perfect, so I always I always uh, rooted and uh, exposed my phones. I think I switched to Gravity Box, like, as soon as that was out, and I was like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. It's like a ROM without having a ROM. <laughs> And and I get with all of the options. Yeah, no, no, exactly. It's like Pandora's box, but all good things, right? Yeah. So you're yeah, basically no, no. running like a really heavily customized ROM, except you get your updates from Google if you're on a Pixel. Like you can keep running stock. Mm -hmm. It's great. Yep. And I miss it. But I, I I stopped doing it, like you said, because you know the features have trickled down. They've also made it a lot harder. So like rooting a phone is not the easy operation it used to be, where it was something you could do in well, something someone like me could do in like 10 minutes. Now it's kind of a pain, especially if you want to stay up to date. Exactly. It's it's been it's an interesting struggle to going through back, you know, with what what the what companies are allowing you even to unlock your bootloader. So there's also that discussion there. Um, there are certain companies that even to this day, there I think they're very known. They're very uh, development friendly, and I'm obviously going to just say right there, OnePlus, very big there, easy. Yeah. You root that device two minutes after, you could still download the updates and install them in Flash, and without having to lose, uh, you know, root or any of the mods that you've done on there, but. Yeah. Other OEMs, yeah, they've uh, they've locked down the bootloader, and I think it's it's very it's it's very. I would say it's more of the uh, limitation that we're getting there that's that's stopping the development. I think once we started hitting that, and they realized like, okay, we closed this door. What do we do? They give you some of those features, and you're not needing it as much. And I think that's where with the the new trend that's going on with Android. Yeah. Uh, you just you're getting them honestly in there. Like we did a video, or there was an article that we posted yesterday on uh, Good Lock. If you're not familiar with it, it's a yeah. the best way to describe it. It's like small modules that you install on your Samsung device. Uh, hope, you, know, be, you know, obviously, if it's supported, uh, like in your individual features like the lock screen and yeah, the, the lock screen, the recent app, the way the recent apps actually sh uh, shows on your device. So we're seeing things just evolve, and yeah. the, the need of root is not as much, but it, it is harder. You're right; it's not as simple. Uh, and very few manufacturers do not void your warranty if you unlock your bootloader. So there's the there's the, also that factor. But I love the fact that OnePlus has been there, still supports the development community, and uh, it's super easy. And it's almost as simple as a Pixel device, but it is getting harder. You're right. Even with Android you know, 10 or even Android 11, uh, it, it becomes a little bit harder. And root business isn't um, achieved right away as we've seen them in the past. Yeah.
But the, another good thing to note, uh, even though it's kind of a small point, but a couple of the more struggling OEMs like Asus, they've been mm -hmm. opening up a whole lot about their uh, developer programs as well, right? With the, uh, yeah, the Zenfone Flip or whatever. I can't remember the name of that one, the one with the flip. I think the Zenfone 6, the, uh, the one that we saw. The, yeah, yeah, the Zenfone 6. And they actually did also send out a few devices to developers. So they're, they're trying to work with developers, which is, again, very good. So those are yeah. those are the things that we want to be able to see. Um, because there's also a, still a big market for it, if we think about it. Yeah, I mean, maybe there not really in the is. U.S. Yeah. If you think of the East, uh, you know, like Indian market or so on, the, the, the viewers there are very still interested in modding, rooting, uh, upgrading, installing, you know, the Gcam mods on, on devices to try it out and see how the camera can get better. So, uh, yeah, there's still a big design, a big need for it. So it's just shifted. I think that's probably and, the way and the it's best not way just about it. adding new features. In a lot of cases, this is about people stretching their phones out to last longer. If you're still getting updates through a custom ROM or through something else, you can keep a two or three year old phone running and secure because you're getting security updates. I mean, exactly. You might be yeah. Loader unlocked. You might be rooted. Whatever. There's security issues associated with that. But nonetheless, it's better than sitting on a phone that's a year, two years out of date as zero day vulnerabilities land and don't get patched. It, it, and that's the main benefit. It's the, it's the support and it's the post-purchase support that we generally lack. Uh, many companies are very, they, they will release devices with updates. And I think Samsung's getting better over it now within the last few years about security patch updates and updates to their devices. But you're right, some devices or some OEMs that are maybe not as, as, as big and they don't have as big of a software development team uh, may stop supporting their devices with security patch updates you know, sooner. And this is the best way to extend life. And that, that was originally why I got into XDA um, I was even during the time I was actually on a Windows Mobile on an MDA device uh, that was uh, limited with Windows Mobile. I think it was it Windows Mobile four and didn't it wasn't going to get the Windows Mobile five. And there was actually a port. There was a developed custom version of Windows Mobile five that ran on my MDA and extended the life of my device. So that was always the mantra of XT8. Yeah, extending the life of your device and giving you full control over what you do with your device. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I like that. Have I think we have a couple questions here from yeah. uh, the peanut gallery, uh, the Twitch chat. Uh, Chick Digger 802 says, hey, TK, question about the Next Doc 2. Does it have a touch screen? So the Next Doc 2 is something that just featured. Uh, we did a couple of articles on those as well. Uh, so it does not have a touch screen, unfortunately. The current model it does not have a touch screen. Uh, it is a 1080p IPS panel that is laminated, and it basically has a reflective uh, text, you know, coding on it. Uh, but the overall experience is essentially, I would say, closer to more non-touch, full version of whatever uh, desktop EMUI or uh, you know DeX version that you're running on your smartphone. Uh, but everything is done through the keyboard and the mouse pad. You are able to use your phone as a touchpad, but not the display. What hold, so I'm actually not familiar with this. What is the next doc? Is it? Uh... Uh, I'm glad you asked, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You said, what is the next doc? I got to answer the question. No, 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 no worries. I asked for it. <laughs> so here's the next talk. The next talk is, um, if you're familiar, remember Project Linda a few years back with yeah. uh, Razor? Oh, Razor, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Razor showed us a concept that, uh, and I think it was at CES, Project Linda, <laughs> Linda. This is like the server. Uh, similar. It, the, the difference is there's no dock. It literally looks like a laptop. It works almost like a laptop. The main superpower here is uh, there's it, connector ports that we have here on the side. So first one here on the far to you would be left or my left to your right uh, is essentially the port that you connect to a smartphone. So a Samsung DeX or an EMUI based desktop uh, device, either an Honor or a Huawei device, uh, which was the original design that was they were trying to shoot for, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, will enable, will actually launch a desktop experience. So making it into a laptop, basically. So unfortunately, no touch display, at least in this version. We do have a backlit keyboard, um, a very nice size battery that charges your device at the same time as you're using it, and it connects via USB-C. So no additional wire, just one cable, USB-C to USB-C, and everything works great. It's just um, like the Superbook. Yeah, and, and then it'll work also with, let's say, uh, OnePlus, if you just want to do screen mirroring. Um, and once, and at some point when we get you know, Android 10 or Android 11 version desktop built into Android, mm -hmm. it will also work here because it's a very similar experience. And okay. uh, the keyboard and the mouse all basically work normally natively, touch sensitivity, swipe gestures, all of the things will work here. Uh, there's a built-in speakers as well as an SD card and a three and a half millimeter headphone jack on the side, okay. just in case you, you miss that nostalgic form factor. That's so they cool. got everything set up. And yeah, about three ninety nine or sorry, two ninety nine shipped. I think like roughly around that from nextstock.com. So very nice. Uh, myself and a buddy of mine, Juan Carlos Bagnell, uh, backed them up back when they were in the Kickstarter campaign stage, 
and we just literally got our hardware uh, right before we went to see uh, like around the CES timeline. So very excited. Okay, cool. I'll have to check that out because I I, uh, I backed the Superbook, which was a similar idea that might have predated mm-hmm. it by a couple of years, and it was garbage, terrible unit, hated it, really, first, really, really bad. First generation of the next stock did have some issues, and there, but there's still a big like a big core fan of people that love it, and I feel like this one just learned everything from the next stock and got us into what we wanted, which essentially is a seamless transition between uh, your phone's uh, operating system, you know, standard Android, either be a nine or 10, running a desktop-like experience and making it functional so that you can, let's say, stop at a coffee shop. And if you have 5G on your smartphone, it has 5G. You have 12 gigs of RAM. This thing has 12 gigs. All of the power of your smartphone in here. And every time you get a new smartphone, this thing gets upgraded. Yeah. So very nice. Yeah. I love the question. Curious to give it a try because I've uh, I've always loved the idea of convergence, but every time I've actually tried a product that claims to do it, the experience has been really bad. So I'd love for someone to succeed at it. it would yeah, be great. yeah, yeah. We we saw them back at at, at I/O last year. Uh, Michelle and I saw them last year, and we were very very excited. Even with the prototype, it was just it looked very very promising. Cool. So uh, check them out. Yeah, nextstock.com. Sweet. So one last question uh, comes courtesy of Max Weinbach. Who's that? I don't know. Um, no so- idea who that guy is. <laughs> Okay, TK, what do you think about these new high megapixel cams starting with the S20 Ultra? So I think overall with the high megapixel, we're, I mean, it's it's a numbers game, right? Because Samsung's always been on the, we don't need to worry about the high megapixel count. We will give you a 12 megapixel count, but we'll give you better pixels. We'll have, you know, uh, bigger pixels and we'll also have the dual aperture. So it's always been their, their game and they're finally jumping into, with the Ultra at least, because we saw that supposedly the Ultra will have a different set of cameras than the standard S20 and S20+. Plus. Um, I'm interested to see what they do. Uh, I mean, obviously, the 865 is quite capable as far as 8K uh, footage. We saw that. We learned that back at, uh, I think it was at the Qualcomm Tech Summit last year. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, image stabilization. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to see more than 4K, sorry, 8K at 30 frames per second, because that's the limitation that we're going to see. So. Gonna get. I, I, you know, I just want to be able to see a lot of good image processing and hopefully support from Gcam as well. I know it's ahead of the phone coming out and I'm kind of chumping it. I always love having the option of trying multiple cameras and Gcam as a mod has been, it can only improve what's already there. So yeah. having a, a very good sensor, yeah. throw that in there. Definitely a good combo. So uh, Max, as, as myself, uh, we're also very excited to see what the uh, S20 Ultra is going to be because... That is a ridiculous high level of megapixels. So I hope it they deliver. On hardware, it's good. I'm. I mean, my my secret paranoia is that I'm most concerned about the processing. I kind of think mm-hmm. that Google's made it clear you can be using a three year old sensor. It doesn't matter as long as your processing is like top shelf. You know what mm-hmm. you're doing with the data you're getting. You yeah. can make almost anything work. And I'm a little worried because I don't think the camera on the S10 was like amazing it was fine it was better than the one plus but it was fine but like it was yeah it was definitely i mean it had it has its merit i wouldn't necessarily say that it was uh you know like top of the line i mean we saw both apple and uh the pixels do quite well but i think samsung did definitely step up their game with the s10 like i'd still like to see them step up processing a little more especially when Mm -hmm. it comes to uh um i want to see improvements on the telephoto both in terms of processing and in terms of uh the 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 actual hardware itself because the 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 telephoto on the S10 was kind of soft and I, I thought it was kind of washed out and maybe some better multiple exposure HDR magic could have had better than yeah. I, I, I wasn't that into it, but maybe they can do better this time around. I hope so. And I hope, I hope we definitely, well, I hope we see a better color calibration between the different lenses. Yeah. So it's not, not necessarily just getting better at the quality of the image, but giving us that same experience. So if I jump to the ultra wide, I'm still going to see the same colors, the same skin tone. So Absolutely. I, hand, hand, I mean, I, I have to give credit to, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the other camp for calibra- calibrating their colors. And I feel like Samsung, if there's anybody that could start this trend on Android, it, they need to be able to knock it out with the S20. So Looking forward to that and, and hoping to be surprised, even if I would like to see it. I want to be surprised with that. See better colors from all of the sensors that they're showing. And consistency, like you're saying, when you switch between the two, you don't want the, the color temperature to change dramatically because it's analyzed yeah. what you've seen. Treat it all as the same. Exactly. Yeah. Let it yeah, lock it in and keep it consistent and give us the flexibility of using all the lenses at the same time in video. No limitations. So those are the things I want to be. I want to be able to jump between the 108 and let's say, you know, 12 or whatever for the, the for that, you know, for whatever feel that I'm trying to get out of the video, because, you know, that's what we want. We want control over our video and uh, give us that buttery smooth, you know, stabilization that you're seeing there, maybe at 4K now, as opposed to not just keeping it at 10p. Yeah. So I, I, I would love that. 
I would agree. I wholeheartedly agree. And to summarize, what we want is Apple's camera in an Android phone. It's kind of what we're what we're talking about here. In terms, yeah, of, yeah. I, I didn't want I didn't want to say the other camp's name, but yeah, okay. yeah, no, okay, exactly. okay. <laughs> Realists at Android, please. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think that's the end of our show. Um, pleasure having everybody. I'm uh, on Twitter. You can reach me. I am. Uh, uh, oh, all the topics we talked today can be found at androidpolice.com slash podcast when I'm not jumping the gun and skipping to the end of the script. Uh, we, we're live four times a week, most weeks, uh, at twitch.tv slash androidpolice. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, if we don't ignore them, you can send an email to podcast.androidpolice.com. And uh, TK can tell you more about where you can find him. So most of the time you can time me just find me just by looking uh, TK Bay, either YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or, you know, anywhere, but at uh, XDA developers, of course, on YouTube and XDA, XDA TV uh, on my own personal channel, TK Bay on YouTube, as well as Tarek Bay, uh, if you're looking for Arabic content as well. But uh, other than that, TK DSL 8655 on Twitter and on Instagram. And on Twitter, I'm at Ryan Hager. That's R-Y-N-E-H-A-G-E-R because I spell my name funny. Our producer, Jules Wang, is at Point Jules, and our theme music is by home. Uh, thanks again to TK. I'm reading this as Jules is typing. We're back with the Q&A live stream on Thursday and another episode of the podcast on Friday. Till then, enjoy the week and take care.